Welcome back. It's Dr. Jen Ferboni, better known as Doc Jen Fit, doctor of physical therapy. And I want to talk about bracing the core. What does this mean? When is it important? Why do we need to focus on it? Now, especially if we are lifting heavier loads, it's a lot better to have an, an understanding of bracing the core and what this means so that we help to stabilize our trunk. Because when we're doing heavier loads, ideally we don't want our trunk to move too much because then we might end up compensating and feeling different sensations than we really want to be feeling. So this is where understanding how to brace the core becomes super beneficial. Now tell me in the comments, do you have a hard time understanding how to brace your core? Do you feel like you have it down? You hold your breath, you don't know how to breathe, you're confused with it, or maybe you've heard neutral spine and you keep trying to understand how to get there, but you're not really sure what that means. Now, neutral spine, we have a natural curve within our spine. We want to kind of honor that. We all have different curves within our spine, so bracing the core might look a little different for each person. So that's why I like to use a long resistance band. Now, this is actually a part of our optimal body therapy kit. So if you do not have resistance band, resistance loops, things that you can use at home, I highly recommend getting some bands. Plus with our kit, we get you get a free back plan that uses all of the tools that come within the kit so that you can really feel better and move better within your body. So we're going to have that linked. Now with the band, you're going to take it around the low rib cage and I like to kind of cross it here, okay? Because this little piece of <laughs> resistance band is going to give feedback to our brain to tell us where we should be breathing and moving from and how we can start to find that core brace. So I'm going to put a little tension on that band and I wanna breathe into that band. So if I breathe in, I kind of get more of that 360 breath pattern without losing anything that's happening maybe in the front of my abdominals. So that's really the key here. If I breathe in, now I'm going to drop that rib cage, lift from my pelvic floor without moving my pelvis at all and starting to brace and contract into my abdominals. So breathing into the sides of my rib cage, breathe out. Lift that pelvic floor, drop that rib cage, and everything kind of comes and stacks. Another way you can kind of find where that stack is, because maybe you rest where when you pull, your hands are tilted up a little bit. You have a little bit more of an arch. Well, if I take a deep breath in, I'm going to get a lot more chest and I'm going to have a hard time expanding into that low rib cage. Or if I'm dropping and my hands are a little low here, again, it's going to be hard to find that 360 breath pattern. So rather than trying to force a perfect posture and sitting up, when you pull, pull out, think of opening those arms just a bit, stacking that body, and you can even come a little bit more into your toes and then find that breath. And you might find, wow, I can expand into the back of my rib cage, the sides of my rib cage, and find that expansion a little bit more. Now, when I say elevator into your pelvic floor, it doesn't mean that you have to do this max Kegel contraction. It's just as my rib cage is lowering, I'm thinking of a small reflexive lift of my pelvic floor. Not a maximal contraction, but just a little bit of a lift of that pelvic floor that's going to help to kind of brace into that whole trunk system. So again, I'm going to maybe lean forward just a little bit, get comfortable, pull out on that band, breathe, <sighs> exhale, and I feel that contraction of my core. Now I can still breathe from the sides of my rib cage as I maintain that core contraction. So I'm still feeling some core, some lift in my pelvic floor, my rib cage is down, I have tension within my body, but I can breathe into the sides of my rib cage here. So even if I was going to do a super heavy squat and I wanted to brace the core and then hold my breath a little bit, I can still breathe into the sides of my rib cage and I have everything locked down. This is going to help to create that brace of that core. So hopefully that starts, it's something that you've got to practice. You've got to work on it, but hopefully it helps to draw that connection of what bracing the core means. Now, 
In order to take it a step further, I wanna show you how you can hover on the ground and kind of feel this when you're moving your legs. So now as I come down to the ground, I'm gonna keep that same tug around my low rib cage and come into an all fours position. Now I wanna press into the ground. So pushing, I'm thinking of like pushing my shoulder blades and my palms into the floor. And I keep that breath pattern around my low rib cage. So try taking just a few breaths here seeing what that feels like. I'm not moving or dipping in my pelvis. I'm just pushing away from the ground and feeling that breath. Then try breathing and contracting in that core a little bit. Rib cage drops, front of the core braces, and I get a little lift from that pelvic floor. And then I can breathe into that rib cage as I maintain that brace. Now, try to hover the knees off the ground just a little bit, and I maintain that that brace. Still breathing into the sides of my rib cage, but now you can feel the core has to do a lot more work as I'm hovering the knees. Then, try to move forward and backward just a little bit. I'm not rounding in my pelvis, so I'm trying to maintain that stack position of the rib cage over the pelvis, my core is still braced. I can still breathe from my rib cage, but I'm holding tension in my trunk as I move. So kind of like as I'm squatting, as I'm moving those hips, rather than rounding and losing connection of that trunk, I'm still bracing and I'm still moving in my legs without anything moving in my trunk. And that's how we start to think about how that's gonna carry over to movement. So let's show you in movement just really quickly. Now let's use that same idea of bracing the core with a squat. So if I lean forward, kind of feel where I get that good brace, breath contraction, I keep this position. So when I'm squatting, I wanna think, I'm not gonna let that pelvis stick out. I'm gonna think of that same core position, open my knees, drop my tailbone to the floor. Open my knees, drop my tailbone to the floor. Some people will have a more of a forward lean depending on the length of their femurs, the ability to have good ankle range of motion. Some people might need to rise up onto an elevated surface on their heels in order to stay a bit more upright. As you can see, that changed a lot for me, but nothing moved in my trunk. That's how we can find our own neutral spine. Same with hinging. So I find where I breathe from that low rib cage, contract in my core, I can still breathe, but then I shoot my hips straight back and then I come up. Nothing moves within my trunk, especially as I come up, I'm not thinking of pulling my hips forward and over squeezing in my glutes. Your glutes are working as you lengthen at the bottom and press down into the floor as you come up. Not that little squeeze at the top, so you don't need that extra squeeze. It's just a lengthening. You can almost think of opening and breathing into that band, breathing out as you stand up. And that's how we keep our own neutral spine. Now for a lunge, it changes just a little bit. Same thing with the trunk. But because when I come back, I want to think of my knee coming into my hip. And that's going to rotate my trunk. But my trunk doesn't move. It only moves as a result of my hip coming more into alignment. So when you lunge, you want to think my nose is over my knee, is over my toe, and I come back. My nose is over my knee, is over my toe. But as you can see, nothing is moving in my trunk. I'm not twisting. I'm only moving from my hips as they move. I'm just following with that same braced position. So hopefully that helps to translate more into movement. How do I maintain this neutral spine? How do I brace in my core? Hopefully that helps to give you a better idea and it takes practice. So let me know how you're doing and what you feel when you try these different movements. Don't forget, if you love what you're learning, I have so much more in stock for you. So hit that subscribe button, check out the other videos I've done in the past, and leave any comments of any suggestions that you have for videos in the future. And I can't wait to help you feel incredible and amazing within your body.